Greetings, royal family. Welcome back. Welcome back. <sighs> oh, that darn Iyanla, I tell you, she, uh, she definitely knows what she's doing. So, part three aired of the Mitchell family. Um, and this is the final part to this, uh, to this series, Unfinished Business. So, Iyanla sat down with, uh, what's his name? Melvin and Marvin. She finished sitting down with them because last week Melvin had a, you know, he, he had a little breakdown in communication. You know what I mean? Um, and she kind of, Yala had to kind of reel it back in. So I love the interaction between the two of them. I think Melvin is just hurt like every, uh, all of the rest of his uh, siblings. And he just wanted to be heard. So when Yala sat down with him one-on-one, -on -one, you know, she uh, dug a little bit deeper into when, uh, Marvin and Melvin were in the foster home and Melvin felt the need to always protect Marvin because Marvin was the one who was, uh, sexually assaulted by multiple people, multiple uh, boys in the group home that they were living in. So Iyanla asked him, you know, a question, do you feel guilty about the fact that Marvin was molested and you weren't? And, you know, Melvin just began to cry and he just felt like, all of these years he's been holding in the fact that he couldn't protect his, his brother. You know what I mean? He couldn't protect his brother. So when Marvin asked Melvin to, to not admit to them being brothers, you know, uh, Melvin realized, you know, I was basically doing it to protect him, but I was diminishing my feelings because I didn't want to speak up for myself and hurt his feelings. And he gets it. He definitely gets it. And um, Iyanla just basically stated to him, you taught him how to treat you. You know, sometimes we can, we can teach people how to treat us without even realizing that we're doing damage to ourselves and allowing someone else to contribute to that damage that we're doing to ourselves. So I thought that that was a great revelation when they sat down. Um, and then Iyanla sat down, Melvin and Marvin together. And I think that there was a breakthrough. It is going to take work. Like Iyanla said, you guys have to practice this. So they were able to apologize to one another. Marvin was able to admit that, you know, social media like and, and their friends and things like that would always say that Melvin was the ugly one and he was the cute one and he didn't care at that time because he was getting attention. Right. He was getting good attention. So which he yearned for, obviously, since he was a young boy. And I can respect his honesty. I mean, it was a little, I cringe. I was like, woo. But I can respect him being honest about the fact that it felt good. You know, people were boosting his ego and they were telling him how cute he was and he dressed nice and all this other stuff and not even realizing how damaging that was to allow other people and him to contribute to putting down, you know, Melvin, the one who always felt the need to protect his brother. So... They did apologize and Iyanla made them understand and, and speak as far as what they need, express what they need from each other and what do they want to tell each other. They both told each other that they love each other. And I, and I see Marvin has like, sometimes he has this like real mm, blank, unreadable check out uh, expression on his face. So I don't know. I mean, I'm listen. I'm, I'm hoping that definitely I'm being positive about it. I'm, I'm hoping that they definitely understand now. It seems when he speaks though, he seems to get it. You know what I mean? And I'm glad that that, that revelation took place between those two brothers because they, they fight the way they do because they do love each other, but they're just so hurt. And that's why Yana was telling Melvin in the last episode in part two, it's not about you. Like you have to not take this personal. However, it's difficult to not take it personal when it's happening to you and it's coming from your own flesh and blood. So, you know, good balance. I love the fact that he was open uh, to criticism. He was open to doing things differently because that's what Iyanla basically wants people to do. Like, let's do it different. You've tried it your way. It doesn't work. Let's do it different. Now, moving on to Kizzy and Miss LaRonda, okay? This is what I was waiting for. Um the continuation of what I was waiting for, because in part two, we saw that Miss LaRonda had to endure abuse or she did endure abuse from her mother. Her, she stated that her mother would tie her to a chair and her mother would, you know, beat her with an extension cord. 
she felt like her mother didn't like her. Her mother was not affectionate. Never, I love you. Now, this part did get me heated, and I think I'm over it. So hopefully my anger won't really display in this video. Um, Kizzy and Iyanla sit down, and Iyanla asked her, why don't you have your children? And she didn't say. Um, she didn't say why she had her children. She, she doesn't have her children. Sorry, honey. I had to check, make sure everything was all good. And she just basically just started expressing to Iyanla and you know she wants to build a friendship with her mother and uh she wants to get to know her yada yada so Iyanla brings out Miss LaRonda <laughs> boy I tell you boy I tell you this was really hard for me to digest because it just made me so angry Iyanla asked Kizzy do you know what happened to your to, to do you know the story of why your mom left like do you know the story behind it kizzy proceeded to say you know my grandmother told me that she was on drugs both my parent or both uh michael senior and her were on drugs and um uh, because kizzy has a different father than the other than the other boys so you know um she was on drugs and you know she just left and the grandmother would tell uh, Kizzy, you know, if your mother ever comes to your school to try to get you to scream, uh, to scream and to get away from her. Kizzy finds out the truth. The truth is Miss LaRonda was not on drugs when she was pregnant with Kizzy, Kizzy. And she wasn't on drugs until she had gotten pregnant with, uh, I think my, I think she said after Michael Jr. If I'm not mistaken. Um, <laughs> Miss LaRonda did not abandon her daughter. Her mother pretty much kind of set her up and was a little bit manipulative and pretty much kind of took her daughter away. Um, Miss LaRonda also told Kizzy that her own mother, which is Kizzy's grandmother, would tie her to a chair, beat her, was very abusive. Kizzy is crying because obviously she can relate to that abuse as well. Um, Kizzy stated that, you know, she got beat also, um, and that she didn't know that all of this was taking place and all of this happened to her own mother. And Miss LaRonda stated that whenever she would come around to see the daughter, you know, the, the mother was always affectionate with Kizzy and putting up a front. All right. And Ayala kind of said to her, like, what's the purpose of you even saying that? You know what pissed me off is because you see, you see the damage that a lie can do. There are some people who lying is their, their, their first language and their second. It seems that what Miss LaRonda was saying, as far as her mother having animosity toward her because she favored the father and maybe, you know, it's a constant reminder of the hate that she has for, for the father. That's why she treated Miss LaRonda like that. Look at the extent that this woman would go to, Kizzy's grandmother, that is, to lie to a child. Just because you have so much hate and animosity for your own child, you would just cause commotion, call the cops, went and got paperwork. No wonder why Miss LaRonda, Miss LaRonda felt defeated. She felt defeated among probably other stuff was probably going on too. I'm only critiquing what was shown, right? A lie, man, a lie, a lie will make its way around the corner before the truth can even get its shoes on. Damn. This girl, this poor girl, Kizzy, this whole time, she's 40 years old and this whole time she's thinking that her mother was some drug addicted person who didn't care about her and all of that anger for all of those years unnecessarily but i don't want to say it's unnecessary because this was meant to happen like yana always says things have to be brought to the surface so that they can be healed but whoever miss whoever laronda's mama is you ain't you ain't right you ain't right you ain't right you ain't right and it doesn't matter if it takes 10 years 15 years uh 30 or 40 years the truth is going to come out and when the longer it stays hidden when it does it's just going to be that more like gigantic so now i wonder when kizzy goes back 
You understand what I'm trying to say? And has a conversation with her grandmother. I wonder what that's going to be like. Because you definitely have to be called to the carpet, Grandma. Real talk, whatever your motive was, whatever your objective was, it caused so much damage. So much collateral damage all over the place, yo. Like, and because you had animosity that you yourself couldn't admit. But then again, that grandmother probably endured some pain herself because, you know, oh my God. Hurt people hurt people. So who knows what Kizzy's grandmother had to endure growing up as a young girl, you know? But man, that was that's really rough. Like, that's really, really rough. And Miss LaRonda did apologize, uh, you know, again to, to her daughter for not being there. Um, but she really, it's a shame because LaRonda got a bad rap, you know what I mean, for, for, for things that weren't even 100% true. You feel me? And it's like... <sighs> Dang, a lie, man. A lie can ruin somebody's life, and it's just so unfortunate. But I'm glad that Iyanla had the opportunity to sit down with them and to discuss things with them, and she made them hold hands and make a pact to not abandon each other. And when she said that, I was like, yes. I was talking to the TV like, yes, don't leave each other. You guys have been separated for too long, and y'all need each other. Don't abandon one another because abandonment is, is, is what they know that that's normal to them, you know? And Iyanla said, the past is the past. It can't hurt you anymore. It can't do anything anymore. Like I remember in one of her, her books, uh, years ago that I, I read, you know, she oftentimes talk, Iyanla oftentimes talk, talks about forgiveness and the things of the past. And she said, you know, forgiveness is accepting the fact that there isn't anything that you can do now about what happened in the, in the, like, there's nothing you can do about it now, you know, accepting the fact that nothing can be done about the past. Like, you know, and I always remember that whenever I, I watch her, her on TV and she's just doing great works out here. And I'm really glad to see that it seemed like it was a productive ending you know how sometimes at the end of the episode, like they give an update. I was waiting for that and they didn't. So hopefully the Mitchell family is, is all good. Um, and hopefully they'll use the tools that they were given because she gave them some really valuable tools. And as like she said, this is going to take practice. You have to practice. You have to want it. You have to want the healing just as bad, uh, as much as you want to, to breathe, to be able to breathe, like, you know, you have to want it. And it's not going to be something that's going to happen overnight, of course, but I really hope that they stick together and I really hope that they don't abandon each other and they just work on it. There's going to be, you know what I'm saying? There's going to be fights, disagreements, but she gave them the tools to learn how to fight, do it differently. So I definitely enjoyed this three-part, um, series with the Mitchell family I'm really glad that there was revelation as far as it pertains to um, LaRonda and Kizzy because that right there, that left me like, what? You know what I mean? And I'm glad that that came to the surface and it came out. And great job. Great job, Yanla. Great job, Mitchell family. So, Royal Family, tell me what you thought. If you saw part one, two, and three, or even if you just saw part three, what do you think? Um, about the the uh, Mitchell family. Um, share your thoughts on, on Iyanla. Hey, even if you have siblings that maybe you need to kind of like learn how to deal with or not deal with at all, because that may, listen, that may be the key to this thing. Because sometimes like people feel like you have to be around people that you're related to. Like, no, you don't. You know what I mean? You can keep a safe distance from anything toxic, but I just feel like with them, they could benefit from being with each other or being united and not abandoning each other because they all have, you know, they all have been hurt by a lot of things. You know what I mean? So not, none of it is personal. You know what I mean? So, but listen, if they, even if they find out that like, all right, you know what? It's best if I just keep my distance respectfully and just, you know, be there, check up on them or make sure they're okay, but just keep my distance while I work on myself. Even that, 
I think is okay. I don't think that that would be counterproductive. So, royal family, tell me what your experiences are with your family members. If you've ever experienced anything similar or close to what some of the Mitchell uh, family members have experienced, what are your thoughts on how Iyanla handled this family in this three-part um, series? i love to hear your feedback. Don't forget to like this video if you like it. Check out my other content on my channel. Leave your feedback. Tell me what you think. Royal family, until next time, I love you for watching. Peace.